What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Dune Part 2. First of all, I like how we could just say Dune Part 2. It ain't no Dune The Record, and it ain't no Dune Aftermath, it ain't no Dune Reflection. It's just Dune Part 2. Ain't no Dune Rises. Ain't no, ain't no none of that. Dune 2, man, what we doing? Of course, director... Denis Villeneuve is back again. First of all, man, he knows how to make an attractive film. If you look at the Dunes, the Blade Runner, the Arrival, he paints a nice picture, like visually, it's just like, yo, attractive. Even, even more the grounded stuff that he's done, like Prisoners or, you know, Sicario look great to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And Sicario is like, I love that film. Uh, I like it better than Sicario 2, but Sicario 1, I was all in. I was all in. But Dune, man, Dune's not for everybody. You gotta be balls deep in the sci-fi mythos, the mythology, to really connect with what's going on, man. Paul and them, they down there in the desert, you know, they left off on part one where he defeated one of the Freeman people that challenged him to a duel. Paul won, killed the dude. And so it's pretty much starting from there. It's like, yo, we, we getting right back into the nitty gritty. They didn't waste no time. That's why these movies feel like they made it all at once. And then they just split it up, but they didn't. That makes it even more impressive that the sequel was this seamless. And I feel like since the first one was a setup, now we all in. It's like that. It's like that situation when you watch comic book movies, and a lot of times the second one is more superior than the first because there was no setup involved. It, we didn't need the setup. So except unless you Iron Man two, then we not talking about that. But like you know what I'm saying, the Winter Soldier, you know Spider Man two. It was like yo man, we. We in here now, we already know. So we're going through Paul and then Paul, Paul and the, the Fremen people are wreaking havoc on, you know, in the in the first one, the Harkonnens, right? Is it the Harkonnens? They pretty much wiped out the whole Atreides family. They just wiped them out. And they don't even know Paul is still alive, Paul and his mom. And so, so now they on the desert and they wreaking havoc on the Harkonnens still trying to harvest the spice from this planet. They just blowing shit up and they out here. Paul's mom got recruited by the Fremen people to be like, yo, we losing this old elder with the special mental gifts. We need, we need another one that can take up place. And mom's just like, I don't know. Well, hey, either you going to do this or you, you, we just going to get you to the desert. And it's like, well, do I have a choice? Nah, I mean, you got a choice. You could either be the new old old lady woman with the special powers, or you could just go to the desert. I mean, but the, hey, hey, the choice is yours. I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna just be the old lady there with the special powers, and then I got to drink the, the worm piss. And once you drink the worm piss and survive, they're like, yo, the prophecy. They all about the prophecy. Some of them are. Some of the freemen are like, nah, we ain't with all that. You know, Zendaya's character's like, eh, I ain't believing none of this, man. We focusing on what's real. And some people are like, the prophecy. It's like, you know, and Javier Bardem's character's like, the prophecy is it's all coming, it's all coming to fruition. And so that's a nice dynamic to see within the Dune universe is how even even the Fremen people are just, you know, some of them are all in on the on the Messiah or whatever, and some of them are like, ah, man, prove it. So we get in that whole dynamic. And Paul wants no part of this. He's like, yo, these visions I'm having, man, I'm going to be responsible for millions of deaths, man. I don't want this. And they're like, no, man, but you are him. But I don't want to be him. Don't make me him. They're like, but you got to go to the South. I don't want to go to the South because if I go to the South, it's going to be millions of people dead. And I'm looking at them, man. And so he's having this whole, like, conflict within himself on who they want him to be and who he believes to be and what he believes is going to happen. So you get this whole dichotomy. Meanwhile, him and Chani, you know, fall in love, but she's still like watching them though. She took her time with Paul. She was like, let me peep game. Let me see if he is who he say he is. I'm watching him, man. My blue eyes is on him. And then she ends up falling for him. They end up getting hot and heavy. And she's like, yo, man, you will never lose me as long as you stay who you are. Once you start changing and acting funny and feeling your little self, I'm out. She let that be known from the jump. Meanwhile, the Harkin is out here taking L's. So the main guy is like, look, man. He's telling Dave Bautista's character, like, look, if you keep fucking up, man, I'm bringing my other nephew in, your brother, because you, you bullshit. And so his brother's this crazy, played by Austin Butler, who played Elvis in the Elvis movie. I still haven't seen the Elvis movie. I'll I, I be forgetting to watch it. He's unhinged. This is a wild boy right here, man. 
And why do you, why do you gotta make the balds so evil, man? As a baldy, I feel a way, man. Why they got to be so evil and so weird and they just, you know what I'm saying? They just be bathing in oil and floating around and just like, you know, they be slicing throats of the help. And I just be like, man, why the balls got to be so, man? Because I'm a baldy, man. Come on. Why couldn't the baldies be the Fremen people down there with no hair? But I guess you need hair to block from the... Anyway. So now we got a new, we got a new heavy, a heavy villain right there. Meanwhile, you know, the, the emperor is still like up there pulling all the strings and like, you know, still trying to keep what he did under wraps, what he did to, to the house of Atreides. So you got all this going on as the story progresses and Paul is like fighting against himself and his destiny, if you will. He finally, you know, I don't want to give away everything, but. That's essentially what Dune 2 is about. It's about Paul coming into his own, kind of making decisions that affect his destiny. The love affair between Paul and Chani. Chani's standing on firm ground on how she rolls and what she believes in and what's important to her. And all of this going on. We got a great fight scene in the end. The action is good. I feel like the action is superior in this one. The performances are great. The visuals are fantastic. It really takes you away to another place. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when I watch Dune, I feel like I'm somewhere else. I'm like, yo, I'm all in here. I feel like it's a strong sequel that seamlessly blends into the first one, but it's even stronger story-wise in an execution. So, but forget all that, man. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Dune Part 2. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving Dune Part 2. Hmm. I'm gonna give it four and a half saxophones out of five. I really don't have that many bad things to say about it. As a picture, you know what I'm saying? The chemistry between Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya could be a tad bit stronger, but I still connected with Zendaya's character a lot. I was just like, I like this character right here. She's like my favorite character in the piece. And of course, the, the Harkonnens are entertaining to look at and watch and, you know, watch them work and just be like, oh, look at you, just vile. I gotta give it a four, I gotta give it a four and a half saxophones out of five. It's impressive filmmaking, man. And, you know, but I just, in part three, I want the balls to just be better portrayed. As a baldy, you know what I'm saying? Why we got to be all greedy and bloodthirsty and weird? You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? All right, peeps, that's my review of Dune Part 2. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comments section below. Do you like the Dune, you know, storyline? Are you are you invested? Are you even interested? Does this type of sci-fi really tickle your fancy? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know who your favorite characters are. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.